Hi, this is your host, Apnil Bharatiya, and welcome to TFI Newsroom, a show where we deep dive into newsworthy announcements. And today we have with us a TFI regular, Michelle McLean, who is now Vice President of Marketing at Salt Security. Michelle, first of all, welcome again, though in a different capacity. Swapnil, thank you so much. It's really lovely to be with you again. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you. So before I talk about Salt Security, I want to talk about you, which will also get Salt Security involved. What do you folks do and what attracted you towards the company? Sure. So I was having a great time working on container and Kubernetes security before. And the intersection of, of security with how we're doing application development right now was really interesting to me. You know, it's it's really upended security, these new application development practices. And so that intersection of how are we going to keep our assets safe as we're moving faster, developing in new ways and exposing new services has been interesting to me for years. And so security sits at that intersection in a really profound way. The, the use of APIs is growing exponentially. And it's funny because when I when they first approached me, I was thinking, well, APIs have been around for a long time. I, I think we've maybe we've solved API security. Why is this a new thing? And as I dug in more, I realized, you know, APIs are changing in really dramatic ways. We're using more of them. They're more functionally rich than they've ever been. And we're using them in really different ways. If we think about new application patterns, things like microservices, how we used to protect APIs, we could kind of do it just at the periphery because the API was sort of like when you left your org and you were going to another entity, that's when I need to protect my APIs. But that's all changed. We use APIs incredibly uh, internally. We use APIs to a really big extent internally within our systems. And you can't drop a box in the middle of your microservices and have it protect your APIs. So I was really fascinated by both the growing need for this new technology and this new approach and the way that SALT came about addressing it, tapping into big data and tapping into ML and AI to make sense of what was happening in your API landscape and giving organizations control over that again. Awesome. Thanks for explaining that. And I would love to actually have you back on the show again to go deeper into uh, what company is doing. But today I want to focus on uh, the the latest report, the state of API security. So let's talk about the report. And um, can you tell me what are the some of the main takeaways of the report, especially for organizations? Yeah, absolutely. So we wanted to dig into a few areas. This notion that we've had APIs for a while, and so haven't we already solved it? We see that in a lot of organizations. And so we really wanted to explore what was the sentiment and the understanding? What were companies confident about in their API security? Where were they maybe having some concerns? And then we also wanted to match that against the reality of what we're seeing in the SALT customer base. We're in a fortunate position where a lot of the customer sort of abstracted metadata comes into a SALT cloud service. And so we're actually able to see empirical data about the reality of what's happening with APIs. And so it was interesting to contrast kind of the sentiment with survey responses uh, against kind of the reality of what we're seeing in the empirical data in the SALT customer base. And a few things really stand out. First and foremost, there is recognition that the concerns around API securities, doubts around API securities are impacting companies. We had um, we asked a very simple question at one point in the survey, have you ever delayed the rollout of an application into production because of API security concerns? And two thirds, 66% of respondents said yes. I wasn't expecting it to be that high. We all know that with digital transformation, you know, app development is is kind of king of the world and go, go, go. This is the key to revenue. You don't slow down app rollouts, right? Um, security is no longer this big gate, this this department of no in an organization. And yet here we had two thirds of, of respondents saying, yes, we have had to slow down the rollout of an application because of API security concerns. So I think that was really interesting and telling uh, and a point of recognition. Like they had this this recognition of having a problem. Uh, the other thing that was really interesting was 91% of respondents had a security incident in the past 12 months, an API security incident. And when we looked at the SALT data, 100% of the SALT customers have 
multiple attacks per month, some of them up to 200 or more attacks per month that are happening against their systems. All of these customers use the traditional API security tools that people think of. They use WAFs, they use API gateways. 100% of our customers have these tools in place and 100% of our customers had attacks that got past those devices. So it's a real wake up call that the devices we've had around four decades, you know, it maybe it shouldn't come as a surprise, but I think people still think they're covered. Um, these devices are not effectively protecting API attacks. Right. And as you were saying earlier that, you know, it was assumed that, you know, API security was a solved issue. You know, it was not even an issue. But, you know, after listening to you, uh, what I wonder or what I want to ask from you is that what are some of the biggest risks to organizations from insecure APIs, which they don't even, you know, consider at some point? Right. It come, they come in a few areas. Uh, one is um, identity is a big deal, right? And and people talk about the notion of identity is the new perimeter. So if I know who you are and I gate you, then I'm going to be okay. Um, but 90% of the attacks that we see, actually, I think it's higher. I think it's like 94% of the attacks that we see in organizations are happening by authenticated users. So, you know, one of the key issues here is what is, you know, some of the assumptions around what is protecting you isn't enough. Um, identity is absolutely critical and you need to do that. But one of the things that people can do is they can come into your system in an authenticated way and then in later API calls, make a change. So they were authenticated with one user ID, but they manipulate a subsequent API call using a different user ID because they can game, they can guess at your system, right? Okay, it's a six digit number. I'll try another six digit number and I'll see what account information I get back. So they can authenticate one way, use a different ID later in their API, uh, in their API transactions and pull data from a different account. So risks fall in areas of account takeover, account abuse. Um, they can, you know, we've seen attacks where people were able to change account numbers midstream through a transaction. So come in, authenticate uh, using one user ID tied to one account, and then in a subsequent API call, one that involved transferring funds, changing the account number in those subsequent calls and moving money between accounts. Um, that's a documented um, banking attack that's happened. So, you know, um, data exfiltration, account takeover, um, exposing of sensitive data. So just, you know, extracting a whole bunch of, of uh, personal data about customers. Uh, that's another big area that people need to be worried about. So uh, what, what I see here is like, you know, we are looking at, you know, some kind of unwanted traffic, right? Or uh, can you talk about um, traffic from, you know, malicious API traffic? And um, if you can provide some examples of it. Some examples of malicious traffic are um, you, you, again, you come in with, you know, one account ID, uh, one user identity, and you change it down the road. And here's the problem. Um, the existing tooling is designed to look transaction by transaction. Okay. So an API call is coming. Does it look valid? Does it look all right? Yes, it does. I'm going to let it go through. And these kinds of devices, WAFs and, and API gateways work this way. They see everything transaction by transaction. And the, the nature of API attacks is really different. Often in security, you're worried about one thing going wrong. If, if they do one thing and they're successful at that one act, they've broken in, game over, I've had a breach. API attacks are, are different. They, they build upon each other in slow ways. It's called low and slow. They, because the attacker needs to understand what your APIs do, what they're capable of. It's not a, a one-off thing of like, I'm going to do a cross-site scripting exploit and, and there's one mechanism for that. They have to understand and learn the blueprint of your APIs. And so they'll, they'll try different things. And so when you have devices that go transaction by transaction, and never stitch together the big picture, you're never gonna pick up these kinds of attacks. What the SALT platform does is take all this API traffic that's happening across your organization, millions to billions of data points, store them in a big data engine and correlate them, okay? So stitch together the activity of a single entity because only when you do that 
can these can these anomalies or these abnormal behaviors stand out? So any one thing could look okay, but the sequence of it may not be okay. Or it could it's it's that kind of stitching together that says, hey, three transactions ago, you were using user ID one, two, three, four. This transaction, you're using user ID four, five, six, seven. A WAF and API gateway is not going to pick that up because a four-digit user ID is an acceptable parameter. So they're not going to see that manipulation, that change that happened uh, in the interim. So you need the, the big data approach, the AI and ML, to go make sense of what's happening and to recognize a normal behavior so that you can pinpoint attackers and stop them. So far, we have kind of talked about... Uh... The problem areas, you know, the risk, and let's talk about uh, some of the solution areas. So, can you talk about um, what are some of the essential elements of a good enterprise API security strategy? Um, let's talk about that. One of the first things that's crucial is that you need to have breadth of coverage. You need to be sure that you're seeing all of your API traffic. Different departments work on different um, aspects of your app development and. Many, many organizations have multiple separate API gateways, for example, often from different vendors. So no one entity like that can give you a cohesive picture of your API traffic. So the first thing to look for is that kind of holistic coverage. Are you seeing the whole landscape? The second thing that you need to look for is uh, a way to collect all of that information. You need it anonymized, of course, to protect your metadata. Um, but to collect it all over time and to understand that state over time. Because what you need to be able to do is distinguish changed patterns that are simply a change versus changed patterns that represent a malicious activity. And I'll give you an example. You need to collect all the API traffic. Uh, maybe you see like, hey, this API call sequence has changed. It's not, this isn't how it used to be. So you start watching it and you see, huh, there are 12 other users that are following this new pattern. Now your system has the intelligence to recognize that's because the API changed. That's not the, the footprint of an attacker. That's a changed API. And now we need to adjust the baseline. So you need this continuous watching. You need dynamic baselining that can keep up with changes because your developers are going to change things all the time. And then finally, you need the ability to then tie back into systems that can do enforcement. So for instance, from the SALT approach, we take ease of deployment really seriously. We don't want to have, we don't want to be an inline device that's really hard for you to deploy. So we, we sit out a band, we simply collect the traffic and, and we analyze it. But when you want to do enforcement, that has to be a device that sits in line. So you're going to want to pair the intelligence, the collection, the context generation with a connection into your system that can take enforcement. So for instance, push a policy into a WAF or an API gateway to block a given attacker. And then the, the final element to look for after you've got a, you know, a rich understanding of what's going on, the ability to enforce blocking when needed. The third element is to then understand, you know, extract from the API traffic analysis that you've got going on, extract the learnings for your developers. So I think it's really important that security takes this opportunity to sort of get back in control and apply controls as needed for API security. But we also want security to be a good corporate citizen and provide really helpful feedback into developers. So giving them the insights, uh, remediation insights into how to improve API security posture is super valuable because we do want to keep working on this notion of security as code and building in the most secure fashion. We would just say it's not enough uh, to, and in some ways it's really just not even fair for the developers to try to shift all of the burden of security onto them in the dev mode. So apply your run, runtime controls, getting get in get the protections you need, but then funnel those insights into developers. So over time, the APIs uh, are more and more strong in terms of their level of protection. Before we wrap this up, one thing that I do want to know from you is that whether it was covered in this report or not, how seriously are organizations taking API security or you feel there is a lot of room for education because they are still not looking at this aspect of securing their workload and infrastructure and uh, keeping everything safe? Yeah, Swapnil, that is 
such an important issue. I think it really depends on the level of maturity around APIs. You know, we're seeing a lot of fintech and finserve, e-commerce, um, tech SaaS kinds of companies really waking up to the risk that APIs pose. But I think for a lot of organizations, the longevity, right, the length of time that we've been working with APIs has bred a lot of complacency. We solved that 15 years ago. We've got a WAF. We've got an API gateway. We're covered. 100% of our customers have WAFs and API gateways, and 100% of our customers are suffering attacks. It's not enough coverage. And I, I think you're absolutely right that a large number of organizations have not woken up to the degree of, of threat that this presents. You know, think about it. APIs, they're like the bank routing code for getting to all your best data and services. Like, of course, the attackers are going to go there. They know the role that APIs play in applications today. It is the most attractive target. Gartner was saying this, I want to say, even like a year ago, that by 2022, APIs are going to be the number one attack vector for applications. Well, it's 2021. <laughs> so we're really close to that reality. And a lot of organizations, um, unfortunately, are thinking, well, my WAF, my API gateway, I think I'm good. Michelle, thank you so much for joining me today to discuss this report. I look forward to talk to you soon. Uh, have a great day. Thank you. Swamil, thank you so much for the conversation. Really appreciated it. 